Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this uh, morning session of the Delphi Economic Forum. Uh, in this uh, fireside chat with uh, Spain's uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Economic Affairs, Nadia Calvino. The focus of our discussion, as you can imagine, uh, uh, will be on the economic outlook for the euro area in the aftermath of the pandemic and in light of the, of the war raging uh, in Ukraine. Uh, our time is very limited, so I will spare you the introduction, which uh, the Vice President uh, doesn't need anyway. Uh, Vice President, good morning from Delphi. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, for joining us. Good morning, everyone. I'm very sorry not to be here in person. Uh, Vice President, I, I would like to start with uh, uh, the most uh, pressing issue for most Europeans these days, inflation and especially energy inflation. Uh, electricity and fuel prices were already very elevated uh, before the war. And since uh, uh, Russia's invasion of uh, Ukraine, things got much, much worse. I would like to ask you for your take on the, on the EU's policy response so far, both at the national level in Spain and at the, at the European level. Uh, is it, uh, first, is it sufficient? And second, is it even in the right direction? I mean, uh, subsidizing fossil fuel product, uh, consumption, is it really our only uh, policy tool available? Well, indeed, uh, we have seen a price spike in energy markets since last summer. Actually, Spain was the country that uh, suffered it first because we have a very flexible wholesale market, uh, very connected to the retail market, and we called for action already then. Unfortunately, Plan has proven that indeed this was a big issue. We now know also that um, that Putin was already preparing and funding his war then, and uh, the situation has got worse. Around 70% of inflation is still due to energy prices. I think the reaction has been fast, uh, has been determined. It's very important that we remain united at European level. Uh, and indeed, the solution cannot be substituted in fossil fuels, of course not. Uh, there is a very fast reaction to compensate most affected sectors, uh, most affected citizens, most uh, vulnerable persons. It makes sense because we need uh, to preserve a basis for the economy to continue to go, but we need to accelerate all investments and reforms that need to uh, the autonomy, which is a big challenge in many member states and it's a common challenge for all of us. Yeah. Can I ask you, like, you, you talked about investment and uh, uh, governments indeed have spent a lot of money uh, first of all, they spend a lot of money in uh, uh, containing the economic fallout of, from the pandemic. Now they are spending a lot of money in trying to contain the economic fallout from the war. And there is a, a discussion in, in, in Brussels about adapting uh, EU's uh, fiscal rules to, uh, 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 to the new realities. I would like to ask you about your take on this discussion. Uh, you recently uh, uh, released a joint uh, paper uh, with the Netherlands on this issue, but I, I was wondering if you can elaborate a bit and maybe go into a, a bit more specifics. Well, indeed, responding to the pandemic has requested uh, a very large uh, increase in the issues about uh, the whole EU, I would say throughout the whole world, really. Uh, fortunately, thanks to the strong growth, we have already started to absorb these debt uh, overhang. Uh, in 2021, actually, the numbers released for Spain last week confirmed that we have uh, exceeded our, our target in terms of deficit and debt already in 2021, and we must continue on this track going forward. It is also true that all European countries need to undertake massive investment. We're all on the same boat. I mean, we need to invest in the green and digital transitions. We need to invest in our future. Uh, and this requires, in our view, uh, an update of our fiscal framework. Uh, it needs to be put for purpose for these new uh, challenges. And, and uh, I think it is a very good uh, news that we manage to sign a, a joint document in the Netherlands. Yeah. It is traditionally a country that was extremely reluctant to changing the fiscal rules. Uh, we were usually putting very different uh, 
strengthens in this kind of European debate. And I think the message that we send uh, the joint statement is very strong. We need to be united. This is a time for consensus. This is a time for working together on the basis of the element on which I think there is a broad agreement throughout the whole EU, such as the need to ensure that the fiscal framework is uh, credible, it is adapted to the needs of the different countries, uh, and it allows all of us to undertake the necessary investment. Like, as I said a moment ago, we invest in our common future, be it at national or and at European level. And this is a good basis to, for our work in the coming months. Can I, can I press you a bit uh, more on this? On the, you, you said the, the new fiscal framework has to be uh, fit for purpose. What does this mean in practice for, for you know, the deficit limits, maybe uh, the debt limit should, for example, exclude defense or energy investment from, from, uh, 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 from these limits? Well, there are different options to reach this uh, common target. And I think the Commission is best placed to put a similar proposal which can serve as a basis for these debates. The message we're sending right now is that on top of responding to the war in the short run uh, and uh, addressing or having a, an appropriate framework for our fiscal stance in 2023, we should not linger in addressing the more structural debate about what should the fiscal system look like at the European level to ensure that we can undertake uh, the challenges of the present and the future. Uh, and I think that there are different options, and I wouldn't uh, like to close uh, any door or to present which one is, uh, is the most promising in terms of reaching that consensus and ensuring that we can uh, undertake a credible uh, debt reduction path which are compatible with growth and job creation. And this is what European citizens want and need. We're talking about fiscal rules, for but of course they have been, uh, for the moment, they're, they, uh, they're suspended because of the pandemic. Governments were uh, used the uh, general escape clause to spend freely and contain the fallout uh, from the pandemic, and now we have the war. And since we have the war, do you think that this suspension, uh, this general escape clause, should be extended to 2023 or maybe beyond? I think in the current uncertainty, uh, it makes sense to extend it. This is what I expect the Commission to propose, and I wouldn't expect a very intense debate on this uh, uh, in the, in the Eurogroup and the gathering of uh, finance ministers of the whole group. A bit a more difficult question. Uh, of course, we're talking about national spending. Uh, the, the problem is that some countries, uh, including my own here in Greece, in Italy, they're already uh, uh, over indebted and they have borrowed a lot uh, uh, to, uh, to finance uh, their response to the pandemic. Now we have another exogenous and symmetric shock, and the, the shock from the war, uh, and the commodity crunch, uh, and the energy crunch. Do you think? national uh, resources uh, and national public co coffers uh, are sufficient or uh, to respond to the challenges posed by the world? Or do we need a recovery fund 2.0 uh, to respond uh, to the challenges uh, uh, of, of what just happened? in Ukraine? Do we need more debt issuance, joint debt issuance at the European level uh, to, uh, to respond to the new crisis? Indeed, we are suffering with a different issue shock because the war is affecting all of us, but the impact is very different in those countries that are in the forefront in terms of the refugee flows, in terms of the energy dependency, uh, obviously uh, the Baltic countries, uh, Poland, uh, and Hungary, those countries that are closer, uh, not to speak about Germany or Italy, who have a, a strong gas dependency, uh, they are more directly impacted than others. But all of us are impacted through energy prices, supply side bottlenecks, and, uh, and slowdown of the very intense recovery we were already uh, having. 
Um, I think that there are different instruments. The European uh, budget is a, is a case at hand. You know, there are different uh, tools and programs there that can support. There is also the recovery plan. Uh, with these very ambitious uh, 750 billion euros mobilized altogether. And obviously, we need to see what room is there uh, to support those countries that are most directly affected. Uh, in this regard, I also trust that the Commission is the best place to, to see if there is a need to activate new tools or if there is margins uh, within the budget and within the existing instruments, which are already uh, being operational. Yeah, so you do not you know, support kicking off a discussion already. You, you, you're waiting from the Commission for any new initiatives on a potential new instruments, uh, joint financing instruments. I think indeed that right now the key challenge is to uh, stop this war as soon as possible, minimize the negative impact uh, on our economies, uh, on the minim minimize the slowdown of the recovery and job creation rhythm that we had already reached since mid 2021 in the case of spain you know we, we had a very strong growth uh, 5.1 percent last year the forecast was of a very strong growth also in 2022 now of course uh, all forecasts are being revised downwards in terms of when referring to, to growth uh, revised upwards when referring to inflation uh, this puts us in a, in a new scenario but we should focus right now on the short-term measures to uh, minimize the negative impact in our recoveries without losing sight of the mid-term objective to reinforce our economic and, and strategic autonomy, for example, in the area of renewables, and, uh, and then see if there are additional financial uh, instruments needed. But I think right now, uh, we need to support the European economy. The European Central Bank is also playing a very important role, and we need to build on this basis. Uh, you said about uh, economic forecasts uh, uh, being revised down. Do, do, you, do, do you think that, uh, is, do you fear that Spain, uh, first Spain and second the euro area, is heading to a recession because of the, uh, of the, the spike in energy and commodity prices? Uh, is this your like, baseline as assumption or is it you know, a credible fear that we may be heading to a recession or at least a stagflationary environment? This is not at all the uh, forecast we have for Spain. Uh, all uh, European and international institutions foresee that Spain will be one of the fastest growing economies uh, within Europe. Uh, and we, uh, even if there is a, a downward revision, the Bank of Spain, for example, issued uh, their uh, forecast uh, only uh, yesterday. And the forecast is 4.5% growth this year. So no, we are not heading towards this kind of scenario. The labor market has uh, continued to behave in a very dynamic manner in the first quarter of this year. Of course, there is a slowdown derived from the impact of the war, but our forecast is one of, of uh, growth this year in an inflationary environment. Our top priority right now is to get as soon as possible measures that would stop the energy price increase. And we are working together with the Commission to ensure that we can decouple the uh, Iberian Peninsula from the rest of the European energy markets, with a view to ensuring that we do have um, that we do have a, a stop this price spike as soon as possible, because this will be the key element or the key driver to stop inflation. Yeah, indeed. The other tool at your disposal uh, in ensuring the, the, you know, the forecast that you described is, of course, very robust uh, uh, in the face of the, of the war. Uh, uh, one of the tools uh, uh, at your disposal is the, is the, are the recovery funds. So I would like to ask you about Spain's experience with the recovery funds. Uh, what, are there, were there any specific challenges, something that makes your life difficult or something which is really positive uh, that uh, you know helps you uh, um, um, give a boost to the uh, to the to the Spanish economy thanks to the recovery fund. Well, the recovery fund is an extraordinary opportunity for all of us, and we are uh, reaching cruise speed now in 2022. We have already transferred around 30 billion euros to the regions for them to undertake investments within their areas of competence. 
We have already resolved uh, and launched many programs to support the green and digital uh, transformation of all the sectors in the economy. And we have already announced 10 strategic projects which go from the agro-food sector, the electric and connected uh, car manufacturing, uh, semiconductor manufacturing, which I think are the key levers, the key drivers of the modernization of our economy. And so I think to Spain, uh, this is an, an extraordinary opportunity to undertake investments which are key for our future, as well as reforms, such as the labor market reform, which uh, entered into effect 1st of January, and has uh, enabled, already led to a structural change in our labor market. Around 31% of contracts uh, signed in March were indefinite contracts, and this compares to around 11% before the pandemic. So this shows that our investments and reforms are already having an impact on our recovery and I hope that this continues to be a key driver for modernization and transformation of our economy to have a more sustainable uh, growth from the social and environmental point of view and also to have a more automat uh, um, autonomy, strategic autonomy. I think the, the Spanish recovery plan, which was well designed in terms of the green and digital transformation, is, is our contribution to the European strategic autonomy going forward. Uh, Vice President, I have uh, many more questions for you, but unfortunately that's all we had time for uh, today. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, joining us uh, uh, in this uh, very interesting dis discussion and for your insights. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, delighted to be with you and hope to be there next year. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ.